Okay, so let's do a projectile motion problem. And the problem I want to do is based on this YouTube video here. So let me play it. Here he is, in the air. Air right now. Let's Airboard. go, baby. Let's go, Tyler. This is the airplane shot. Now, now, now. Okay, so in this particular problem, or this particular shot, we have a person in an airplane, and they shoot the basketball from the airplane, and it drops into the basketball hoop. So uh, to put some numbers to this, let's say the airplane is initially at an altitude of 15 meters, and traveling at 35 meters per second, about 80 miles per hour, probably, uh, that's pretty fast, and drops a basketball into a 3 meter tall basketball hoop. So. If you're trying to do this, one question you might want to ask is, how far away from the hoop do you have to be when you're in the airplane in order to drop the basketball and make the shot? Okay, so let's uh, come down and start uh, labeling things on our picture. Our picture's already drawn uh, here, so let's label things that we know. Um, so we know that uh, the plane is at an altitude of 15 meters, so I'm just going to put that here, which means that uh, the initial y position of the ball up here, so I'm going to put a little arrow there, the initial y position is itself 15 meters. Um, we can label the initial time as 0 seconds, and we're told the speed of the plane, the initial speed of the plane uh, is 35 meters per second. And so that also means that the initial speed of the basketball, since it was on the plane, is 35 meters per second to the right. Well, okay, so now we know the basketball ends up in the basketball hoop, which is 3 meters tall. So the final position of the basketball is 3 meters, and I'll make that to two sig figs, so 3.0 meters. Uh, the final time at which it arrives there we don't know really anything about that. And uh, we don't know anything about the final velocity in the y direction. That being said, uh, we do know something about the initial velocity in the y direction. The initial velocity in the y direction, since it's just being dropped from this basketball hoop, is actually 0 meters per second. And throughout all of this, the ball will accelerate down with an acceleration of minus g in the y direction. Okay. Uh, oh, sorry, there were some other things we didn't label. We forgot to label the initial x position. So the initial x position, let's just call that 0 meters. And then the final x position is also unknown. And actually, that's what we're trying to find trying to find the distance that the person has to be away to drop the basketball. So let's list our knowns and unknowns. So what we know is we know the uh, initial y position, we know the initial time, we know the initial x position, we know the initial x velocity and the initial y velocity we know the acceleration in the y direction, we know the final y velocity, and, and well, we didn't say it here um, when we labeled it initially, we know the final x velocity is the same as the initial x velocity, so I'll just uh, put that here as well. What we don't know, well, we don't know the final time the final position, or the final velocity in the y direction. And what we're after is this final position xf, so that we can use that to figure out the displacement, how far away the basketball was when it was dropped in order for it to hit the basketball hoop. Okay, so I think we've got everything labeled, so let's go to solving this. And with this uh, projectile motion problem, as with almost all projectile motion problems, the trick is first going to be to find the time. 
Or here, since we know the initial time, we want to find the final time. And that's going to be our link between the horizontal and the vertical directions. So we want to find delta t, or t sub f, uh, using what we know in order to find the thing that we want to find at the end of the day, or we're asked to find. OK, so uh, the usual rule in projectile motion problems is to split things up into vertical and horizontal parts. So let's first look at the vertical. And we want to find the time, delta t. We know the initial y position, the final y position, the initial y velocity, and the acceleration in the y direction. So we look at our equation sheet, and we see that this expression, delta y is viy delta t minus 1 half acceleration due to gravity delta t squared, is going to help us. In particular, the initial y velocity is 0. So this is really kind of nice. This just becomes the displacement in the y direction is minus one half acceleration due to gravity times change in time squared. Notice this minus sign here. This is all going to be okay because delta y in this case, the displacement in the y direction is actually also negative. The ball is falling so it has a negative vertical displacement. So we can solve this for delta t, the time it takes for the ball to fall and to hit the basketball hoop. And so we find delta t is negative 2, displacement in the y direction over the acceleration due to gravity. And if we put in our displacement very carefully there, so now we have negative 2 times, well, the initial position was 15 meters. The final y position is 3 meters. Sorry, I have that backwards. Um, final minus initial, final is 3 meters, initial is 15 meters, that makes a lot more sense, over the 9.80 meters per second squared. And take the square root of that whole thing. So be careful on that delta y. That delta y isn't 15 meters in this case. It really is the displacement. So uh, the 3 meters minus 15 meters. And we should get something around 1.6 seconds for the time it takes for the ball to fall. OK, so now that we found delta t, uh, we can compare that, or we can use that in the horizontal direction to find what we wanted to find. So OK, now we have, let's go back up, now we have delta t, so we have t sub f, and we can use that to find x sub f, which is what we were after at the end of the day. So in the horizontal direction, we know the velocity and we know the time, so we can use this expression to find the displacement in the horizontal direction. So 35 meters per second in the horizontal direction is 1.6 seconds. Comes out to be around 55 meters for the displacement. Which essentially means, okay, so this, this was also delta x is the final position minus the initial position, which since the initial position is zero, this is just the final position. So this means that the final position of the basketball hoop has to be at 55 meters, or you have to be 55 meters away when you drop the basketball. And if we actually go back to the video, um, the time seems about right, 1.6 seconds, around a second and a half for it to drop. OK, maybe that's a. Uh, yeah, well, okay, so that seems about reasonable. Um, 55 meters, it doesn't look like it's 55 meters away um, in the video. So either the estimate for how fast we assumed that the plane was going, 35 meters per second, is a bit high, or more likely uh, the video is pretty heavily altered and may not actually be true. <laughs>